Okay, welcome to our first session on arterial blood gas analysis. Uh, we've been talking about acid base. So, uh, arterial blood gases are something you're going to be handed the rest of your life uh, in the hospital, and you're going to need to make a fairly quick sense of it, uh, and it's not that hard. So, uh, now you should learn kind of what I'm going to teach you today very well. So, this, is, this should be something that I could wake you up in the middle of the night, and I could say, quick, the pH is 746, PCO2 is 42, bicarb is 31, what does this patient have? Okay? It's not that hard if you follow the rules I'm going to give you today for reading arterial blood gas. Now, keep in mind that these, what I'm going to tell you today is correct, uh, but a full analysis of, of an arterial blood gas, and certainly of a patient, uh, can be much more complicated than this. Okay? So, first of all, uh, consider your normal arterial blood gas range. Okay, so consider a normal pH of 738 to 742, uh, PCO2 35 to 45, uh, and a bicarb of 22 to 26. Usually they say 24 is about normal. Now, the first thing you're going to do when you look at an arterial blood gas is you're going to decide, uh, is this acidemia or alkalemia? Okay, so is the blood acidemic or alkalemic? Acidemic, low pH, alkalemic, high pH. You might be more familiar with the terms uh, acidosis and alkalosis, and these typically refer to the process rather than the state of the blood. Okay? So you're going to look at the pH, you're going to decide uh, there's an acidemia or there's an alkalemia. Okay? Now keep in the back of your head that the cause of the problem okay, is going to be in the same direction of what you originally see. Okay? So if you see an acidemia, then the cause is going to be some sort of acidosis. Okay, and the reason I say that is because for each of these problems, or for a lot of them, uh, there's going to be a primary cause, and then there's going to be a compensatory mechanism. Okay, whatever the original status of the blood is, the primary cause is in that direction. The compensation is not. Okay, and that'll make sense as we go through these. Uh, second thing you're going to do, you've looked at the pH, now you're going to look at the PCO2. And you're going to say to yourself, does the PCO2 fit with the pH? So if the PCO2 is low, okay, that is below 35, you have a respiratory alkalosis. Okay? If the PCO2 is high, above 45, you have a respiratory acidosis. After you do that, you're now going to look at the bicarb. Remember we said it's 22 to 26. If it's low, you have a metabolic acidosis. Okay, so think of those protons being consumed by the bicarb, being used up, so your bicarb would be low in an acidosis. And if it's high, think of the opposite. You have a metabolic alkalosis. Now, remember, the body does not overcompensate. So this is back to point number one that I made. The cause is going to be in the same direction of what you see in the blood, and the compensation is not. Okay, that's going to make sense as we do examples. Finally, the compensation can be complete or incomplete. Okay, it's considered complete compensation if it brings the pH back into the normal range. It's considered incomplete if it does not bring it back into the normal range. So, let's do some examples and hopefully all this will make sense. Uh, example one, we have a pH of 734, a PCO2 of 52, and a bicarb of 19. What does that mean? Follow my rules. Number one, I look at the pH. It is low. So I know I have an acidemia. Look at the PCO2, rule number two. It's 52, it is high. High PCO2 tells me it's a respiratory acidosis. Okay, so this is in the same direction as the pH. So, so far I have a respiratory acidosis. And now I look at the bicarb, number three, and I see that the bicarb is low. So that's a metabolic acidosis. And so I can say with some confidence that this patient uh, is acidemic, and the reason is because they have a respiratory and a metabolic acidosis. Both of these are in the same direction. Okay, not that hard. Next problem. We have a patient with a pH of 735, so this is low, this is acidemia. We have a PCO2 of 50, I'm on number two here. Okay, so the PCO2 is high. This is a respiratory alkalosis. Excuse me, respiratory acidosis. Okay, they're not breathing fast enough. They're retaining CO2. If you remember your carbonic anhydrase reaction, that means you are producing, so to speak, more protons and thus you'll be more acidotic. So high PCO2 is respiratory acidosis and 
Now, in this case, we have a high bicarbonate. So what does that mean? The bicarb is high. That's a metabolic alkalosis. So what is going on here? Well, we know we have acidemia. And remember, the cause is in the same direction of the state of the blood. So what that means here is that we have a respiratory acidosis with, uh, comp with compensation metabolically. So if I were to describe this, I would say we have a patient with respiratory acidosis with incomplete metabolic compensation. Okay, so that means there's compensation by the bicarbonate, it's higher, uh, but it's incomplete because our pH is not back into the regular range. All right, another example. pH of 7.39, PCO2 of 24, bicarb of 19. So, we see that the pH is actually in the normal range, although it's a little acidotic, so we have a little bit of acidemia. Uh, we have a PCO2 uh, that is low. And if we go up to number two here, we know a low PCO2 tells us respiratory alkalosis. So this is going in the opposite direction from our blood. Okay? And if we look at the bicarb, uh, we see that our bicarb is low, and so there's a metabolic acidosis. So, what is going on here? Well, we know that bicarb is going in the same direction of our, as our pH. Okay? So what we would say because we remember rule number four, the body does not overcompensate, okay? We would say that this patient has a metabolic acidosis with a complete respiratory compensation, okay? So it's metabolic acidosis with complete respiratory compensation. We know that this is respiratory alkalosis. We know that this is metabolic acidosis and the pH is normal, although it's a little below it. So we know that it's the, uh, the respiration that's brought this back up towards 7.4. So this patient has a metabolic alkalosis, uh, and they've, blow they've compensated by blowing off more PCO2 uh, to bring their pH back up into the normal range. Good. OK, the next one, pH 7.46. It's a little high. PCO2 of 42, bicarb of 31. So we have a high pH, so we have a alkalinia, uh, we have PCO2 that's 42, it's in the normal range, uh, and we have a bicarb that's high, it's a bicarb that's high is metabolic alkalosis. So what does that tell us? Well, the bicarb is in the same direction uh, as the pH. So this one's actually pretty easy. This patient has a uncompensated metabolic alkalosis. Uncompensated because the PCO2 is in the normal range, they haven't adjusted their breathing to deal with this at all. Next one, pH of 7.39, PCO2 of 41, bicarb of 25, what do we have? Well, pH is in the normal range, PCO2 is in the normal range, and bicarb is in the normal range. This is a normal arterial blood gas, nothing wrong with this patient, at least not in terms of the arterial blood gas. Finally, our last example, we have a pH of 7.41, a PCO2 of 51, and a bicarb of 33. So, the pH looks normal, although it's a little bit above 7.41, so there's a slight alkalemia that might help me with my uh, figuring out what's going on here. PCO2 is high, and we know that high means respiratory acidosis. You're keeping that CO2, which is creating more protons. It's acidic, okay? And we have a bicarb that is high, and so high bicarb is a metabolic alkalosis. So again, we remember the body doesn't overcompensate, and the, prime, the cause is in the same direction when you look at the blood pH. So in this case, we have two things that are, that are out of the ordinary, but the, we see that the pH is a little bit above 7.41, so there's a slight alkalemia. That would tell us that the main problem is the metabolic alkalosis, okay? And then the PCO2 is compensating. So this is a patient with a metabolic alkalosis with a complete respiratory compensation. So, hopefully this will get you started. Uh, you should be able to rattle this stuff off in your sleep. You should be able to look at an arterial blood gas uh, and tell me what's the main insult uh, and what, if any, is the compensation. So, hopefully this will get you started uh, and you can move on to doing anion gap analysis and uh, other things of that nature. But this is the, the, the foundation. Uh, see you next time.